or praise it to the most high. So tonight's topic is called friendship not friendish. Friendship not friendish. That's tonight's topic. Okay, let's open up with the book of Ephesians chapter, chapter 6, verse 1. There are 6 and 1. Let's start there. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Instead of a friend, become not an enemy. For thereby thou shalt inherit an ill name, shame, mm -hmm. and reproach. Even so shall a sinner that hath a double tongue. Read that again, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 1. Come on. Instead of a friend, become not an enemy. Stop right there. It says, instead of a friend, become not an enemy. So the Lord is going to teach us what it means to be a friend. You understand? It says, become a friend, not an enemy. That's what it's saying right there. We need to understand what is a friend. Give me that in John 15 verse 14. Let's understand what is a friend according to the Bible. It says, instead of a friend, become not an enemy. Okay, let's read that. John 15 verse 14. Read that. John chapter 15 verse 14. Come on. Ye are my friends. If ye do... Whatsoever I command you. Read again. John chapter 15, verse 14. Read. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. You see what it means to be a friend? He says, Christ says, ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. What did Christ command us? Give me that in Matthew 19, 15. This is what Christ commanded us. Okay. Matthew 19, verse 16. He says, we are his friends, if we do whatsoever he commanded us. This is what God Christ commanded us. You know what? Don't go there. Give me the book of Jeremiah 7. Okay? He says, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 7. Read verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23. Come on. But this thing commanded I them say. But, but this thing did what? But this thing commanded I them. But this thing commanded I them. What did the Lord command us? Come on. Saying, obey my voice mm -hmm. and I will be your God. He says, obey my voice and I will be your God. Read. And ye shall be my people. Come on. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. You see what he's saying? He says, but this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice and I will be your God. So what is the voice of the Lord? Give me that in Deuteronomy 27 verse 10. It says, this thing commanded I then. Obey my voice and I will be your God. Read that. Deuteronomy 27. Read verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 10. Come on. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Read. And do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. You see what the voice of the Lord, that our God is? His commandments, his law. So go back to John 15, verse 14 again. John chapter 15, verse 14. Come on. Ye are my friends, mm -hmm. if ye do whatsoever I command you. What did Christ command us? That we must obey the voice of the Lord our God. What is the voice of the Lord our God? God's commandments. Okay? That is friendship. The true friendship of the Bible is what? Is based on God's commandments. If it's not based on God's laws, that's not a friendship. That is a friend-ish. You understand? Watch this. Give me Psalms 119 verse 53. Psalms 119 verse 53. Okay? Let's see what it means to be a friend in the Bible. According to the scriptures. Read that. Psalms 119 verse 63. Mm -hmm. I am a companion of all them that fear thee. Read. And of them that keep thy precepts. So what is a companion? A companion is a friend. It says, I am a companion. A companion comes from the word company. Somebody that someone that you keep company with. It says, I am a companion, meaning I keep company with them that fear thee, that fear the Lord, and of them that keep God's precepts. What is what is a precept? Give me Psalms 119, same chapter. Psalms 119, verse 104. Read that. Psalms of the 119, verse 104. Come on. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. You see that thing? Through thy precepts, I get understanding. So the precepts of the Lord will give you understanding. Go ahead. 
Therefore, I hate every false way. I hate every false way. The false way is the lies, philosophy of men, traditions of men, man-made doctrines. That's what it does, the false way. He says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Let me show you there, because King David said the same thing. Get Psalms 111 and 10. Watch this. Psalms 111 verse 10. Psalms 111 verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. You see that thing? A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. So that's why I go back to Psalms 119 now, verse 104. Again. Psalms 119, verse 104. Read. Through thy precepts, I get an understanding. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I hate every false way. So the precept is the commandment. It says, through thy commandment, I get understanding. So go back to Psalms 119, verse 63 again. Psalms 119, verse 63. Mm -hmm. I am a companion of all them that fear thee. Right. And of them that keep thy precepts. So your friendship must be based on the best, must be with the people that fear the Lord and the people that keep God's commandment, that keep God's precepts. So anything, anybody outside of that is not a friend. It's just somebody you know. You understand? And the most that God teaches you how to deal with those people. You don't spend too much time with them. Watch this. Give me that thing, Ecclesiastes, okay? Ecclesiastes, chapter... Um, Sarah 27 verse 12. Watch this. Sarah 27 verse 12. When you're dealing with the people of the world, this is how you must conduct yourself around them. Watch this. Ready? Ecclesiastes 27 verse 12. Mm -hmm. If thou be among the indiscreet. The indiscreet is our people that hate the laws of God. Our people that will not humble down what the Bible says. Come on. Observe the time. He says observe the time. Always be checking the time. Don't spend too much time with them. You understand? That's why I said, observe the time. Read. But be continually among men of understanding. Men of understanding, women of understanding, that's your friend. That's your friendship. It says, but be continually among men of understanding. Because when you're among men of understanding, this is what the conversation will look like. Track 9 verse 15. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 15. Read. Let thy talk be with the wise. Let your communication, that your talk, your conversation, be with the wise. The wise is the people that keep the laws of God. You understand? The companion that fear the Lord and keep his precepts. Right? And all thy communication in the law of the Most High. And your communication when you're among the wise will be what? Will be in the law of the Most High God. But when you are among the indiscreet who don't keep God's commandments, the Lord says, observe the time. Don't spend too much time with them because they will seduce you to what? To fall back into sin. That's what the Lord is saying. So he says you must be very careful who you make friends with. Guess what? You make, you, you make friends in the truth. That's where you meet friends. You understand? Because they keep the commandments. You want to keep the commandments. And you agree on the same thing. Understand that? So watch this. Give me, go back to Sarah 6 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 1. Read. Instead of a friend, become not an enemy. Stop right there. So it's that the Lord is telling you what a friend is. A friend is the one that keeps the commandments of the Lord. It says, don't become an enemy. It says, be a friend instead of an enemy. Because what is an enemy? An enemy is our people that don't keep the commandments. They are our enemies until they repent. Understand that? Okay, come on. For thereby... Thou shalt inherit an ill name. Because you're going to inherit an ill name if you become an enemy. Because now you become an enemy to what? You become an enemy to your people and to the Mosah. So it says, thereby shalt thou inherit an ill name. Because guess what? You must make your name in this truth. You must have a good name. It's your job to build a good name. That's for you men and women. Both men and women, you are responsible for having a good name. So that when your name comes up, we don't flinch. You understand? We don't, it doesn't seem like we're smelling some dead dog. It mustn't be like that. You don't have an ill name. Don't have shame and reproach. Go ahead. Even so, shall a sinner that at the double tongue. Because an enemy who doesn't keep God's commandment, guess what? They have an ill name, shame, and reproach. 
Guess what? That's a sinner that has a double tongue. You understand? Because why? They don't know how to apply the laws of God not to be a talebearer, not to be a gossiper. Okay? You can't be in this truth and be gossiping. Some of you have told you about that. You understand? Just running your mouth. Always running your mouth. I mean, I'm seeing these brothers just be running their mouth. The hell is this? Watch this. Give me track 5 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Come on. We know not with every wind. He says, don't go with every wind. The way we know means don't go with every wind. Come on. The wind is the wind of doctrine, philosophies, and, and um, things that are, are against the law. Right? And go not into every way. Go not into every way. Don't be gossiping. You hear something, you run with. You hear that, you run with that. Right? For so does a, the sinner that has a double tongue. You see what a sinner has? A sinner has a double tongue. They are terrible. They are gossiping, both men and women. You understand? So you sisters also don't have a don't don't have a big mouth. Men don't like that. The Bible is against a, a, a sister that has a big mouth. Just be gossiping. Just be running her mouth. She does not have discretion. She does not have time. You understand? So you sisters must learn that. When men are speaking, be quiet. Listen and learn. Don't be all up in a man's face. You understand? Read again verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Come on. We know not with every wind. Mm -hmm. And go not into every way. Right. For so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. So that the sinner that has a double tongue running their black mouth with their big gums. Now watch this. Give me Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 because when it says every wind, what is he talking about every wind? He says we know not with every wind. Ephesians 4 14. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. Come on. That we henceforth be no more children don't be a child, because children, they win know, they win with every way. They don't have time. Okay, come on. Tossed to and fro, mm -hmm. and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You see that thing? Because as a child, with a child mindset, you're going to be tossed to and fro by everything you hear because you have a double tongue. Right? By the slight of men. By the deceit of men, because men will deceive you if they see you don't have a spine. You don't have a good footing in the laws of God. Right? And cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Their job is to lie in wait to deceive you because your mind is simple. You are not rigid in the laws of God. You are going with every wind. Everything you hear, you run with it because you are not rigid in God's commandments. That goes for both men and women. You understand? Give me First Corinthians 13 verse 11. Watch this. Because as a child, you have a child mentality. A child has what? They win with every wind. First Corinthians 13 verse 11. Watch this. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Wait. When I was a child, mm -hmm. I speak as a child. You see that thing? When you are a child, you speak like a child without sense. Wait. I understood as a child. Mm -hmm. I thought as a child. You think like a child? Come on. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You see that thing? When you become a man or a woman in the truth, you put away those childish things. You stop gossiping. You stop, you stop running your mouth. You start becoming a good friend according to the scriptures because now you are rooted in God's command. You understand? Now go back to Sarag 6. Yeah. Sarag 6, read verse 5. Ecclesiastes 6, verse 5. Come on. Sweet language will multiply friends. It says sweet language will multiply friends. Read. And a fear speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. It says a fear speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. What is the sweet language that will multiply a friend? We know what a friend is. A friend is a brother or sister that keeps the laws of God. That's a friend. You understand? In the sight of God. Watch this. What is the sweet language? Go back to Psalms. Give me Psalms 119. Read verse 103 now. Psalms 119 verse 103. The sweet language that will multiply friends. Come on. Psalms chapter 119 verse 103. Come on. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Mm. Yay, sweeter than honey to my mouth. He says, how sweet are thy words to my taste. So the sweet language is the sweet words. What is those words? The word of the most High God, God's commandment. God's laws will multiply friends. That's the sweet language he's talking about. Give me Psalm 55 verse 14. Psalm 55 verse 14. Sweet language will multiply friends. When you see people leave, they start to separate themselves from you. 
because now you're keeping those commandments. Those are not friends. Those are your enemies, according to the Bible. Read that. Psalm 55, verse 14. Read it. Psalm 55, verse 14. Come on. We took sweet counsel together. We took sweet counsel together. The sweet counsel comes from the, what? the laws of God. The counsel is God's commandment because the laws of God, they are sweet. You understand? That's why you're going to multiply friends. Read. And walked unto the house of God in company. We walked unto the house of God in company because those are your companions. Those are your friends. Friends will walk together with you to the house of the Lord to take sweet counsel together, which is God's commandment. You see that thing right there? Now give me Sarah 6 verse 14. Sarah 6 verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 14. Read. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Mm. And he that has found such an one has found a treasure. You see what he's saying? A faithful friend is a strong defense. Strong defense against what? Against evil, wickedness, sin, temptation. You understand? Lust. Because this faithful friend, they are faithful not to you, but they are faithful to the laws of God when it comes to you. They are faithful to God's commandments when it comes to you. So they will deal with you according to God's laws. And if you are a true friend, you will take the correction because they love you. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 27, verse 6. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Come on. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, mm -hmm. but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. You see that thing? It's as faithful are the wounds of a friend. Because a friend will stab you in, in your chest. That's a friend. You see them coming because they tell you, listen, this is wrong, this is wrong. Don't act like this, don't act that way. Why are you always up in a man's face? I'm talking about you sisters because in the world, sisters don't correct each other. In the truth, older sisters, your job is to correct the sisters coming in. You understand? Understand that. Because in the world, that doesn't take place. Sisters, they enable each other to do evil. You understand? In the world, men correct one another, but not as much as in the truth. In the truth, we correct you. 24 hours a day, 99.9% of the time, you are being corrected. Okay? Because that's a good friend. That's a faithful friend. It's a, it's a good defense against the day of your child, the day of evil. Because they use the laws of God to lift you up. They're not going to tell you what you want to hear. Read again. Verse 6. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Come on. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Mm -hmm. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The kisses of an enemy are deceitful. They, an enemy will tell you what you want to hear. That's an enemy. You understand? That's what happens in the world. That's what happens in the Christian church. They don't tell our people the truth. So the, the church, the pastors, they are enemies to God. They are enemies to our people. Understand that? Now go back to Sarah 6. Now read verse 15. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 15. Read. Nothing does countervail a faithful friend. Mm -hmm. And his excellency is invaluable. The excellency of a faithful friend is, a, is invaluable. You can't put a price on that. What makes this friend to be excellent? Give me that in Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 26. Proverbs 12, 26. Watch this. Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 26. Read. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. So what makes your friend to be excellent is what? Is because he's righteous. He keeps the commandments of the law. Read. But the way of the wicked seduces them. That's the enemy. Any of our people, they will seduce you. With what? With evil. That's not a faithful friend. That's not a strong defense. They will enable you to be going to sin. But a good friend will prevent you from going into sin because they want to tell you to your face that this is wrong. You must fix it because they love you. Go back to where you were then. Strike 6. Okay? Strike 6 verse 16. Come on. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 16. Read. Right? A faithful friend is the medicine of life. Hmm, go ahead. And they that fear the Lord shall find him. You see that thing? A faithful friend is the, is the medicine of life. And they that fear the Lord shall find him. You're going to find that faithful friend that is the medicine of life. Watch this. Give me the book of Sarah 38 verse 5. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. Sarah 38. Yeah, verse 4. Verse 4. Read verse 4. Sarah 38 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 38, verse 4. Yeah, come on. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. 
and he that is wise will not uphold him. He says, the Lord created many sons out of the earth, and he that is wise will not uphold him. Watch this. Give me Psalm 35, verse 11. He says, the Lord created many sons out of the earth. Read that. Psalm 35, verse 11. Let me show you. This is twofold. This scripture right here is twofold. Okay, come on. Psalm 85, verse 11. Read. Truth shall spring out of the earth. You see that thing? Truth shall spring out of the earth. The earth. The earth is the Bible. It says truth will spring out of the earth. So that truth is the medicine that the Lord created out of the earth. The Holy Bible. Go ahead. Psalms of the 85 is living. Right. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Righteousness shall look down from heaven. Mm -hmm. It says Yay. truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Because righteousness comes from the laws of the Most High God. Because the laws of God comes from the heavenly part. Okay, go back to where was that? Sarah 6, verse 14, verse 16 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 16. Right? A faithful friend is the medicine of life. Mm -hmm. And they that fear the Lord shall find it. So this medicine of life, this medicine is the laws of God. Will give you life. That friend will come with the medicine of life. What is that? The laws of God. God's commandment. Read. Right? Whoso fear the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. If you fear God, you will choose, you will direct your friendship aright. How do you do that? You use the laws of God to direct your friendship. You understand? And knowing what a friend is, the laws of the laws of the most high God will teach you that. A friend is the one that keeps the laws of God. They believe in the most high and they apply what is written. Go ahead. For he, for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. You see that thing? So if your friendship. You understand? He says, your, this friend is your neighbor. You see that part right there? It says, whoso fear the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. If as you fear the Lord, guess what? Your neighbor also will fear the Lord because he's just like you. Because you're basing your friendship on the laws of the Most High God. You read chapter 19, 17. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Come on. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You see that thing? That is a faith, but that's being a faithful friend. You understand? You're not, like, you're not uh, hating your brother in your heart. You correct him. You build your friendship based on what the Bible says. That's a friendship that will what? That will survive the test of time. That's what the Lord is telling us right here. You understand? So. Because you need to understand what it means to be a friend. What is a friend? What a friend is according to the scriptures, and how to build good friendship according to the Most High God. Okay. Um, give me Sarah six verse seventeen. We continue. Okay. Um, Sarah chapter six verse seventeen. Let's read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter six verse seventeen. Come on. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Mm -hmm. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 17. Come Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Stop right there. It says, if you fear the Lord, you will direct your friendship the right way. You understand? If you fear the Lord. How do we fear the Lord? Give me that in Psalms 111 and 10. This is what it means to fear the most high God. Psalms 111 and 10. If you fear the Lord, you will direct your friendship aright. Okay, come on. The book of Psalms 111 verse 10. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Right. His praise endure it forever. So you see what it means to fear the Lord? You do his commandments. So if you want to have good friendship, you must be fearing the Lord. You must be keeping his commandments. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Give me Proverbs, chapter 1. Read verse 7. Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You see what the Bible is saying? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What is the knowledge? Get that in Malachi 2 verse 7. 
Okay, Malachi 2, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Watch this. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Wait. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, mm -hmm. and they should seek the law at his mouth. You see that? So the knowledge that we must find in the mouth of the priest is the laws of God, God's commandments. That's the knowledge. So let's go back. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The knowledge is the laws of God. When you fear God, guess what? You will keep his knowledge, which is his commandment. Watch this. Come on. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because if you say you are, you, you, you are a friend or you have a friendship, but it's not based on the laws of God. God is letting you know that you are a fool that hates instruction. Because the instruction that you're going to receive for you to build good friendships, you're going to get it from the laws of God. The most that God will teach you what it means to be a friend, what, is it, what does it mean to have a friendship, okay? But a fool will despise wisdom and instruction. That means that's not a friendship. You understand? For instance, boyfriend and girlfriend, that is not a friendship. Only fools get involved in girlfriend and boyfriend relationships. You understand? So the most that God is letting you know right there that only those that fear his laws, they will have, they will what? They will direct their friendship aright according to the laws of God. And that means they have wisdom, they have understanding, they fear the most high God. You see that thing? The most of the Bible has everything. So go back to Sirach 6, verse 17. You understand? Because what you want to know is in the world, man, in the world, you have uh, brothers, you have sisters, you have brothers that have friends that are women. That's not based on the laws of God. You understand? Men and women can't be friends. Men are always looking for one thing. You understand? And women, because they love the attention, guess what? They agree to this type of friendship. No, that's my guy friend. You see what, how they call it? They say guy friends. No, no, no. That's your boyfriend. Let me say that again. Because I've had this before in the world. No, that's my guy friend. That's my guy friend. So how many guy friends do you have? No, that's my guy friend. No, that's a whole right thing. You understand? Because it's not a guy. That's a re Replace the word guy with boy. That is a boyfriend. You understand? No, that's, a, that, that, that's, my, that's my friend who's a girl. No, no, that's your girlfriend. So fools get involved in stuff like that. Read that again, Proverbs 1 verse 7. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You understand? Because you hear a lot of stories where, uh, no, that's my guy friend. But when you investigate, no, one day, you know, we got drunk and we had sex. One day this happened. These are things that you hear. Because that's not based on the most I God. That's not based on God's commandments. It's based on lust. You understand? It's based on lust. Understand that thing. So you brothers, you come into this truth. The so-called variki, you know, that's my woman friend and all that. You better drop that nonsense. Sisters as well, you come into the truth. You have that. You better drop that nonsense because there's no man that is going to marry you or prove you when you still have to, you still have, you still the whole bit. You still have all these guy friends. No, 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 no. You are a ticking time ball. You're not marriage material. Likewise, brothers as well. You have all these so-called women friends in the world. You're not marriage material. You're not ready to be a husband. You're not ready to be a leader in Israel. Yet. You understand? Read the thing again, verse 7. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Next verse. Come on. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake mm. not the law of thy mother. What is he saying? What is he saying? Hold it. Give me that in Ephesians 6 and 1. Let's see what King Solomon is saying here. Ephesians 6 verse 1. We're coming back here. Okay, come on. Ephesians 6, verse 1. We were to God. 
the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Go ahead. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. You see what? This is a commandment right here. It says, children, obey your what? Obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Go ahead. Honor thy father and mother, mm. which is the first commandment with promise. You see that? Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Promise of what? Life. Eternal life. You understand? This is the fifth commandment here. That's what King Solomon is bringing out. Okay, go back. Proverbs 1, verse 8 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. You see that thing? The instruction of your father and your mother is the law. The instruction of your father and the law of your mother, that's the commandment of the most High. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head mm -hmm. and chains about thy neck. Because they will direct you. You understand? They will guide you. The, these laws that you are given by your parents in the Lord, they are going to guide you and you're going to have eternal life. Understand that? And you will have the spirit of grace so you will have respect, you will have honor, you will have substance. Okay? Now go back to Zerach 6 now. Ecclesiastical chapter 6, verse 17. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiastical chapter 6, chapter 6 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Whoso the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Come on. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. You see, he's telling you that your friendship will be is with your neighbor. Your neighbor, which is the children of thy people. He says, for as he is, meaning what? As you fear the Lord, so your, your neighbor will also fear the Lord because your friendship with your neighbor is based on God's law. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? That is what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 1. I'll give an example. Okay? He says, if you fear the Lord, you will direct your friendship by right. 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 1. Let's read it. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. That the what? That the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. So the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. So King David and, and Jonathan were friends. You understand? In the Lord. He says their souls was knit. Okay, come on. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. That's what we just said when he says, for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. He says, Jonathan loved King David as his own soul. Give me Leviticus 19 verse 17. Let's read that real quick. You understand? How did he love him as, in, as, his, as his own soul? Watch this. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19. Okay, verse 17 and 18. Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Because you're not going to allow your neighbor to find you, him or, or herself in the midst of sin. You will correct them according to the scriptures because why? They know the scriptures. Both of you believe in what the Bible says. The two of you must be in one on one accord when it comes to the Bible. You come from different walks of life. The thing that brings us together is God's commandment. You understand? Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge. Mm. Nor pay any grudge against the children of thy people. Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. He says, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And that's exactly what Jonathan and King David were. He says, Jonathan loved King David as his own soul. He loved his neighbor like he loved himself. You see that thing right there? Watch this. Give me that in Judges chapter 20 verse 8. Judges. He says, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of King David. Give me Judges 20 verse 8. The book of Judges. Chapter 20, verses 8. Read. 
And all the people arose as one man, saying, They did what? And all the people arose as one man. This is talking about Israel here. He says, All the people arose as one man. Jump up to verse 1. So we get it. Judges 20, verse 1. Come on. The book of Judges. So the 20, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man. You see that? The congregation was gathered together as one man. Go ahead. From Dan even to Beersheba was the land of Gilead unto the Lord in Mizpah. Unto the Lord in Mizpah. So it says all the congregation gathered together as one man. That's what we're pushing here at Soldiers of Christ. So we, all of us, men and women, we gather together as one man. Who's that man? Jesus the Christ. Because we represent the body of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, our King. You understand? Hold it. Give me the book of First Corinthians. First Corinthians 1, verse 10. First book of Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Read. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mm. by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. You see that? That we all speak the same thing. The same thing that we speak is the laws of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ. We all, we all, as a congregation, we all speak the same thing. We gather together, that's how we gather together as one man. We speak the same thing. Go ahead. And that there be no divisions among you. You see that? That there be no divisions among you. Because what's going to divide us? When you believe something different and I believe something different, now we are already divided. But the thing that is going to bring us together is God's laws. The laws of the Most High God is what bring us together. That's the source. You understand? That is the soul that brings us together. God's commandments. Go ahead. But that ye be perfectly joined together mm -hmm. in the same mind and in the same judgment. We must be perfectly joined together in the same mind, meaning we all think, we all speak, and we all see things the same way because we're using the Bible to make day-to-day -day decisions. So as soon as you see a brother or sister going the hell off, they start talking about things that are contrary to the scriptures. That means we cannot walk. We, we, we are not walk, We are no longer knit as one man. That means the sister has gotten bit by Satan. The brother has gotten bit by the devil. That's why now they speak things contrary to what you have heard. Contrary to what you've been taught. You understand? So we can't walk together because we're not going to agree. Because you think something different, you speak something different, you don't make the same judgment as I would make the judgment because we have to all abide by what the Bible says. We must have it down to what that says the law as it is written. You understand? So go back. Go back to Judges, chapter 20, verse 1 again. The book of Judges, chapter 20, verse 1. Go ahead. Then all the children of Israel went out and the congregation was gathered together as one man. You see that thing? That's From what we then, just read. Hold on. That's what we just read in First Corinthians 1 verse 10. Go ahead. From then even to Beersheba, was the land of Gilead unto the Lord in Mizpah. Jump down to verse 8 now. The book of Judges, chapter 20, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And all the people arose as one man, saying. Right. We will not, any of us, go to his tent. Neither will we, any of us, turn into his house. So now it says, all the people that is not, it says, we arose as one man. We gather together as one man. We arose as one man. We walk as one. Jump down to verse 11. Come on. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. They says they were what now? Knit together as one man. He says we were knit together as one man, just like Jonathan and King David. He says they were knit together as one man. They were on one accord. You understand? The love of neighbor, the unity of the brethren, according to as it is written. You understand? So go back. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 again. 
First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. You see that? Jonathan loved him. So, hold on. They were as one man. They were knit together as one man. Go ahead. And, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. He loved him as his own soul. He, meaning what? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Get that in James, okay? Give me the book of James. James chapter 2, verse 18. Let's read that. The book of James chapter 2, verses 18. Go ahead. Yea, a man say, thou hast faith. No, no, no. Verse 8. I'm sorry. Verse 8. James 2, verse 8. Excuse me, sir. The book of James chapter 2, verse 8. Go if ahead. you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. You see that? So that's what Jonathan and David were. They loved each other according to the scriptures because they fulfilled the royal law. So any friendship that is not based on God's commandments, guess what? That is based on fate. It's based on lust. It's based on evil. You're coming together for evil purposes. It's got nothing to do with God's commandments. You're not glorifying the most high God at that point. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of John, okay? Give me the book of John chapter 13, verse 23. Here's another example, okay? He says, if you fear the Lord, you're going to direct your friendship aright. You know what? Before we get there, watch this. Hmm. Go back to First Samuel. Go back to First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. First Samuel chapter 20 and verse 1. Watch this. First book of Samuel, chapter 20, verse 1. Go ahead. And David fled from Nioth in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, what have I done? Mm -hmm. What is my iniquity? What is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? Because this is Saul. Saul wanted to kill David. Okay. Saul hated David. So now David is on the run. So now he's meeting with Saul's son, Jonathan. So he's asking me, so what did I do? What is my sin before your father? Go ahead. And he said unto him, God forbid, thou shalt not die. Mm -hmm. Behold, my father will do nothing either great or small. Great. Right? But that he will show it to me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. So now Jonathan is saying, listen, my father is not going to do that. And my father is not going to hide this thing from me. That's what Jonathan is saying to David. He's comforting him. Okay, come on. And David swam over and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. Mm -hmm. And he said, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. Go ahead. But truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. He says, I'm about to die because your father is pursuing me. Wants me to put, he wants to put me to death. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Go ahead. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. He says, whatever you need, friend, I'm going to help you. Whatever you need, don't worry. My father's not going to kill you. Guess what? Whatever you need, I'm going to help you. Remember, it says, he loved him as his own soul. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. Stop right there. What did he say? Tomorrow is the new moon. You see what their conversation was based on? Their conversation was based on being your brother's keeper. And it was also based on what? The laws of the Most High God. Listen to the conversation. Read verse 5 again. First book of Samuel, chapter 20, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, Tomorrow is the new moon. Read. Right? The new moon is a feast day. The new moon is the beginning of our month. When the, when the month begins, because as you see outside, the moon is not so far from being full, which, is, which will be a feast. It's a feast day. You understand? Go ahead. And I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. Mm -hmm. But let me go. 
that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. You see that? So the, their conversation is based on God's commandment. They spoke the same thing. Watch this. Give me track nine. Okay? Give me Ecclesiastical. Ecclesiastical chapter 9, verse 15. Love this scripture right here. Track 9, 15. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastical chapter 9, verse 15. Go ahead. Let thy talk be with the wise. Mm -hmm. And all thy communication in the law of the Most High. That's what we just read in First King, in First Samuel 20, verse 5. Between King David and Jonathan. They were talking about the celebrating, they were talking about them, them celebrating the new moon, which is a feast day. So their common communication was according to the law of the most high God. So these are great examples of friendship that we see. Watch this. Give me the book of John chapter 13, verse 23 now. John chapter 13, verse 23. Watch this. The book of John. Chapter 13, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Read that again. The book of John, chapter 13, verse 23. Read. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. He says there was leaning on Christ, meaning on Christ's shoulder, you understand, meaning on his chest. Next to his chest, just listening. So this talk about the apostle John. He says, whom Jesus loved. You understand? Go ahead. Simon Peter, therefore, beckoned to him that he should ask who it be of whom he spake. Meaning, who is he talking to? Is he, who, who is Christ talking about? Okay. The one that was always leaning on Christ. On Christ. You understand? To learn. That's how John was. Right? He then, lying on Jesus' breast, said to him, Lord, who is it? The apostle Peter is asking the question. You understand? Go ahead. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Wait. After the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest too quickly. So now, okay, that's going into something else. That's going into Judas now. But what I wanted to show you is, when it says, the one that was leaning on, on, on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. You understand? Because he was always leaning to learn. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of John chapter 21 verse 20. John 21, verse 20. The book of John, chapter 21, verses 20. Mm -hmm. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following. So now, stop right there. So now, this is the apostle Peter walking with, he is walking with, um, with Christ. So they are having a discussion. So now, as they are talking, it says, the disciple whom Christ loved, came behind them, following them. You understand? Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 21, verses 20. Read. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Okay. Read verse 20 again. Read verse 20 again. The book of John, chapter 21, verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and mm. said, Lord, which is he that betrayed? So the apostle Peter, he's talking about the disciple whom Christ loved. And he was following the apostle Peter and Christ as they were talking. So as they are speaking like this, the apostle Peter is asking the question, looking at John. You understand? It says, which is he that betrayed? Meaning, looking at John behind him. Okay, read. Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? He says, what shall this man do? Meaning, the man that's following them. He's referring to the apostle John. Okay, go ahead. Jesus said unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow the me. 
You see what Christ is asking now? It says, if I will that he tell it till I come. So if I tell him to wait, what is that to you, Peter? You follow me. Don't worry about John. That's what Christ told him. Watch this. Give me the book of John 19, verse 26. I'm going to show you why it says, and the disciple whom Jesus loved. Watch this. John chapter 19, verse 26. This is when they were crucifying Christ, right? Watch this. Come on. The book of John chapter 19, verse 26. You know what? Hmm. Hmm. Hold this. Give me the book of Micah. Okay. Give me Micah real quick. I'm going to show you something. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5 and verse Micah 5 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 1. Mm -hmm. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Talk about Israel, that the troops and daughter of troops is the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. So let's talk about Christ. He says they're going to they're gonna what? They're going to smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. They're going about when Christ was going to what? When Christ was crucified. They are going to smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. Watch this. This just popped into my head. There's a scripture I'm looking for. Um... Yeah, give me Zechariah 13, Zechariah chapter 13, Zechariah 13, verse 7. Um, read, the, read Micah 5, verse 1 again, Zechariah 13, verse 7. That's where I want to go after this. Okay. The book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 1. Now right. gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. He says they're going to smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. Talk about Christ. You understand? Okay. Now, give me Zechariah 13. Read verse 7 now. Zechariah 13, verse 7. Read what you got. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 7. Read. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. Read. And against the man that is my fellow, mm. saith the little host. Read. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. He says, smite the what? Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. He says, smite the shepherd, meaning the judge of Israel, which is Christ. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. He is prophesying about when Christ was going to be crucified. Because guess what? The disciples, they ran. You understand? Keep that in mind. Read that again. Verse 7. The book of Zechariah Chapter 13, verse 7. Read. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. Read. And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Now, let's go back now. Now go back to, now go to John 19. Go on, John 19, verse 26. Watch this. It says, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall scatter, right? Watch this. John 19, verse 26. The book of John, chapter 19, verses 26. Read. Right. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, Stop right there. he said, and, Hold on, read that again. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother. You know what? Before you get there, give me Matthew 26, verse 31. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. I'm still dealing with the, the friendship that is based on that is based on God, the most high God's laws. Watch this. This is the apostle John with Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, right? Matthew 26, verse 31. We read it in Zechariah 18, verse 7. But I want to show you something what Christ said here. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. Come on. Then saith Jesus unto them. Mm -hmm. All ye shall be offended because of me this night. He says, all is the what? All ye shall be offended because of me this night. He says, all ye we are going to be offended because of me this night. Because what is he talking about? Because remember, this is the Passover night. You understand? This is the part they are observing the Passover. Okay, go ahead. For it is written. Mm -hmm. I will smite the shepherd. 
and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. You see that thing? Is that they're gonna smite the shepherd, and the sheep is that the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Because that's when they are they are going, that's when they, when they were crucifying Christ, before they crucified him, guess what? They were torturing him. They were also looking for the disciples that followed Christ. You understand? That's why that woman says to the about the apostle Peter says, he's one of them. And the apostle Peter denied Christ three times. They will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall scatter. Okay? Watch this. Now give me John 19. Now read verse 26. John 19 verse 23. I'm going to show you something about the apostle John. Read that. The book of John chapter 19 verse 26. Go ahead. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. You see what you see what Christ said? Remember Christ now, the only you notice what who was who was there when Christ was on the cross? John. The apostle John was the only one that was there. You understand? He was loyal to the end. He was loyal to the end. You see that part right there? Read again verse 26. Okay. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 26. Mm -hmm. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto the mother, Woman, behold thy son. Because remember now, he says, Listen, I'm going to die. You understand? So look after my mother when I'm gone. That's what Christ is telling John. He says, What? He says, Woman, behold thy son, making reference to John. John was right there until the end. You understand? John was right there until the end. So John was faithful. The level of faith that he had, it was more, not that the other, the other disciples was not, they were, but not like the apostle John. You understand? He was very loyal unto the end. He didn't run. Go ahead. Then said he to the disciple, behold, thy mother. Mm -hmm. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. You see that thing? It says, from that, from that hour, it says, that disciple whom he loved, which is John, it says, took her unto his own home. Because there was not a point where women were by themselves. That, unlike you see today, you see sisters saying, I'm independent, these independent um, black dragons. Listen, there was never a point where women were by themselves. You understand? There was always a male figure looking after the women. That's why the women, they had sense, they had protection, they had nature, they had guidance. They had what? They had a hedge over them. So there was not a point where you were this thing, but the independent black. There's no such thing in the Bible. Even when Eve was created, guess what? Eve, when he was, when he was created, guess who was, he, who, who, she was given to Adam. She was never by herself. After Eve was created out of Adam, she was brought to the man. Not to be independent. You understand? That's why here the Apostle John looked after who? Looked after Christ's mother. You understand? That was the command. So likewise, sisters, you don't have a father over you. The Lord will appoint fathers in the truth to look after you, to guide you. You understand? To be all up in your business. To make sure that you're not talking to no boys and all that. You're not doing some funky stuff. You're preparing you for marriage. Understand that thing. Okay, I'm getting okay, I'm getting to another topic now. Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of first Maccabees 2, verse 1. Okay, here's another good example. You understand? First Maccabees 2, verse 1. This is the the, Maca, the this is the Hasmonean family, the Mac, the, the, the Maccabees, okay. First Maccabees 2 verse 1. Watch this. First book of Maccabees chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Joarib, from Jerusalem and dwelt in Modin. So now this is our forefather Mattathias. Mattathias has five sons. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And he had five sons, 
Johanan called Cadiz. Johanan called Simon. Cadiz. So, so these were these were Levites. These were that's why it says a priest of the sons of Johanan from Jerusalem and dwelt in Mori. So these were Levites. Okay, read verse two again. First book of Maccabees, chapter two, verses two. Go ahead. And he had five sons, Johanan called Cadiz. Ray. Simon called Tassi. Ray. Tutas, who was called Maccabees. Ray. Eli Eliza called Avaran. And Jonathan, whose surname was Af Aphas. Aphas. Whose surname was called Aphas. So now, these are the five sons of Marathias, right? Watch this. Give me, jump down to, give me, uh, jump down to verse 27. First Maccabees 2.27. Because at this point, there was great persecution against our people by the Greeks. You understand? So Marathias rose up. Watch this. Give me, no, you know, you know what? Read verse 6. Read verse 6 and 7 together. Okay? First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 6. Mm-hmm. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and Jerusalem by the Greeks, okay, come on. He said, Woe is me. Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people and of the holy city and to dwell there when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers? Because now the, our enemies, which was the Greeks, they were also what? They were also in the temple, doing evil in the temple, sacrificing swine flesh. You understand? Go ahead. Her temple is become as a man without glory. You see that thing? Because they were defiling our temple. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 14. You know what? No, no. Read verse 27. Let's just get to the point. Read verse 27. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 27. Mm hmm and Marathias cried throughout the city with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous of the law and, the, and maintaineth the covenant, let him follow me. You see what he did? He gathered the people together. He says, whoever is zealous of the law, whoever is about the laws of God, he says, and they want to maintain the covenant, which is what? The commandment of the Most High. He says, let him follow me. Those that are about the father's business, follow me. That's what he's saying, right? Jump down. Read verse, read verse 39 now. First Maccabees 2 verse 39. Read. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 39. Read. Now when Marathias and his friends understood hereof, they mourned for them, right? So. You see that because what the Greeks did, they invaded our temple. They were killing our mothers, our sons, and our daughters. You understand? So now Marathiah is like, listen, we have to rise up. We have to do something. We have to defend our nation. Read that again, verse 39. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 39. Read. Right? Now when Marathias and his friends understood hereof, oh, they mourned you. for them. He says, when Marathias and his what? And his friends. And his friends. And his friends. Remember, their friends are based upon what? Jump up to verse 27 again. Because that's the friend he's talking about. Read verse 27. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 27. Go ahead. And Marathias cried throughout the city with a loud voice, saying, Whosoever is zealous of the law and maintaineth the covenant, let him follow me. So now the friend is based on what? Those that are zealous of the law and they maintain the covenant. That's the friend he's talking about. Read verse 39 again. Verse 39. Now, when Marathias and his friends understood hereof, they mourned for them right so. They mourned for our people that were put to death by the Greeks. Go ahead. And one of them said to another, if we all do as our brethren have done and fight not for our lives and laws against the heathen, they will now quickly root us out of the earth. You see what he's saying? He says, listen, if we hide and not fight back, Guess what? They're going to do the same thing they did to our brethren. So we have to fight back now. Go ahead. At that time, therefore, they decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Sabbath day, we will fight against him. 
neither will we die all as our brethren that were murdered in the secret places. Because they were hiding the brothers, the sisters, and the children, and they found them. Guess what? They were murdering them. He says, listen, we have to take war to them on the Sabbath day. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? Go ahead. Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians. Assyrians. The Assyrians. The Assyrians is the Hasmonean dynasty. That's the Maccabee. Okay? Go ahead. Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians who were mighty men of Israel, mm. even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. You see that thing? The, the, the company of the Assyrians who were mighty men of Israel, even all such were voluntarily devoted unto the law. They were about the father's business. That's the point. That is the friends that he's talking about. At the time of war, he had friends. Those friends were about what? They were zealous of the law. I'm showing you the example of our forefathers, the type of friendship they had. Their friendship was always based on God's law. Understand that. Read verse 45. Come on. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 45. Read. Really? Then Marathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. Mm. And what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised. Those they circumcised valiantly. Because you see what he's saying? Is that those of the Israelites that were not circumcised, he says they circumcised them valiantly. You understand? They made sure that they were circumcised because remember, the Greeks, they are the ones that made our people not to circumcise their children. You understand? Go ahead. They pursued also after the proud men and the work prospered in their hand. You see that because the Lord was with them. The Lord was... The Lord was, was with them, protecting them, and to go and defend the sanctuary, the laws, the children, and the women. That's what they did. Watch this. Go ahead. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles. Mm. And out mm. of the hand of kings. Read verse 48 again. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 48. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles. They recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles, meaning the Greeks. Go ahead. And out of the hand of kings, mm. neither suffered they the sinner to triumph. You see that they, they did not allow the sinners to what? To triumph in their sin. Jump down to the read verse 54 now. Okay. Now, you know what? Read verse 49. Read verse 49. Verse 49. Now, when the time drew near that Marathias should die, he said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction, and the wrath of indignation. So now he is about to die. Now he's going to direct his sons what they must do after he's gone. Because he raised them up, he guided them, he gave them the law, statutes, and the commandments, he raised them up to be men and to defend their nation. Okay, read. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law mm -hmm. and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. You see that thing? Give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. That is the same friend that is he's giving them the advice, you understand, to have the same friendship that he had. He wants his sons to have the same friendship as well. Jump down to the 60, 62 now, 64. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 64. Come on. Wherefore, ye my sons, be mm -hmm. valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. Really? For by it shall you obtain glory. Go ahead. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. So now he's saying he's making sure that when he's gone, everybody's going to fall into their proper role and there's not going to be any envy among them. There's going to be respect and honor among them. Okay, come on. As for Judas Maccabees, he has been mighty and strong even from his youth up. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. Right. Take also unto you all those that observe the law mm. and avenge ye the wrong of your people. You see what he's telling them? He says, take, unto, he says, take also unto you all those that observe the law, meaning those that are zealous of the law. 
So the same method, the same technique, the same program that he had was running with his friends. He is giving the same formula to his son. This is how you this is how you recover your nation from what? From captivity. This is how you deliver your nation from oppression. Make sure that the company you keep is those that keep the commandments of the most high God. That's the friendship that the Lord is looking for. Any friendship that is what? That is against God's commandments, that's not a friendship. That, 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 those are your enemies. Because guess what? From the young ones to the older ones, and that's what you see. Our people in the world, they don't know how to make friendships. You understand? If you be sisters, the friendships are based on how many men they speak with. If it's the brothers, if the friendship in the world is based on how many sisters they are sleeping with. That is the friendship of the world, which is evil as hell. You understand? And those friendships is the reason why today young girls are having sex with baby mama, baby daddy, no marriage, single parent household, broken families. You understand? Gang. Okay? Teenage pregnancy. That's the reason of, that's the reason why is because it's not based on God's will. It's based on lust and evil. That's why our nation is broken like this. Because our friendship is not based on what the most has God said. You understand? So, but I'm showing you here how our forefathers moved in the past. So we learn from this and do what they did to glorify the most high God. Read that again, verse 67. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 67. Read. Take also unto you all those that observe the law and avenge ye the wrong of your people. Recompense fully the heathen and take heed to the commandments of the law. You see that? He's going, he's going back to the law. He says, recompense fully the heathen, meaning what? Pay them back for what they did to us. He says, and take heed to the commandments of the law. So he's saying the company you keep must be about the commandments of the most high God. And you must have, we must have one mind to, de to defend your nation, to deliver your nation from oppression. That's what we're doing this day. You understand? Read verse 69 now. Come on. That's Maccabees chapter 2, verse 69. Go ahead. So he blessed them and was gathered to his fathers. You saw now Marathias died. Now. Okay. Now read chapter 3, verse 1. First Maccabees 3, verse 1. All I want is verse 1 and 2. Read that. Now Marathias is gone. Now his sons are left now to continue the mission. I want you to see the mindset that they were in based on what their father Marathias had instructed them. Watch this. Read. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Then his son Judas, called Maccabees, rose up in his stead. So now Judas has taken over. Go ahead. And all his brethren helped him. Stop right there. And all his brethren helped him. All his brethren helped him. One of the biggest problems that we see in our community, our people don't know how to work well together. You know why? Because they don't what? They don't use the laws of God to work together. The only way that the black men and the black women will be able to work together is using the laws of God. You cannot work together using what you see on TV, what you see on Desperate Housewives or the, the, the Disky Divas and all that nonsense. No, that's not how you work together. The most that God is telling you how to work together how, because we believe the same thing. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not uh, covet, so on and so forth. Thou shalt have no other God. We all, we, we believe all that. Guess what? We're going to be able to know how to work well together. Like a well-oiled machine. Read again. Okay, verse 2. Come on. First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 2. Mm. And all his brethren helped him. And so did all they that held with his father. You see that thing? So those that were with, with that, those that went to war with his father, they also joined to assist. Okay, come on. And they fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. You see that? They fought with cheerfulness the battle of Israel because they found joy in working together, agreeing as one, moving as one, being on one accord as one man, knit together. You understand? And they fought the battle of Israel to defend their nation. That is what we do in this day. That's why we go to the sea to wake our people up. The only way we can be able to do that is because the Spirit of Christ is among us, is within us, 
and we understand what is the most that God requires of us. We must keep the commandments of the law. You understand? In the faith of his son, the Christ. So go back to Sarah 6, verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 17. Wait. Right? Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Mm -hmm. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Because guess what? You're going you gonna to teach, you're going to love your neighbor by teaching him or her the laws of God. You understand? Why do you dress like that? No, because God says so. Why do you have a beard on your face? Because that's what the most like God says. What, what are those things that you have on your clothes? What are those things for? Is because God says we must have them on our clothes to remember the commandment. You understand? Your friendship must be based on that faith the Lord. Then we will begin to build our nation back up. You understand? Read that again, verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 17. Go ahead. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Mm -hmm. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. You see that thing? As he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something this day. Um, jump up. Jump up to verse 3, verse 7. Because one of the biggest problems that you see men and women have in this truth, they don't get along, is because this does not take place. Read that, verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. Come on. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Mm -hmm. And be not hasty to credit him. You see what the Bible is saying? If you would have get a friend, the Lord says you must prove him first. Meaning, to prove means test them. Test that woman. Test that brother. The Bible says if you get a friend, it says prove him first. And don't be too quick to give him credit. And how do you test them? This is how you prove them. Watch this. Give me the book of First John chapter 4 verse 1. First John 4 verse 1. This is how you test the friend that you, the quote-unquote friend that you've got. Okay? First John chapter 4 verse 1. Read that. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Stop right there. That's why he's saying, and don't be hasty to credit him or her. You understand? Don't be too quick to credit this brother. Don't be too quick to credit this sister. That's the law. That's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. The reason why you see today, our sisters, they have, they are, they are in high school, they are in primary. You understand? They have, they, they have, they have, they have children now. They are pregnant and all that is because they were too quick to credit that brother because who are the Jordan? Who is got a, is got a nice face? Hmm. Unalidi. He's got uh, what they, 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 they just, based on that, they say, okay, he's, he's a good guy, he's nice, he's cute. No, 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 no. The most that God says, don't be hasty to credit him. Likewise, you brothers, you see a sister, big booty, big booty, a, a big bar and a smile. You say, oh, that's, that's the one right there. You simple as hell. You're going to die. You don't know what this sister has been through. You don't know if she's got a disease. You don't know if the sister is sick. You don't know. But when not because you see, you see a big bar and a smile. You just think, oh, no, no, I want to prove that this. Mm -mm. Don't be too hasty to credit that. That's it. Read the verse again, verse 1. First John, the 4, verse 1. Come on. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't believe every spirit, but you must prove the spirit. Go ahead. But try the spirits, mm -hmm. whether they are of God. You see what it's saying? But you must try the spirit. Meaning test the spirit. Test that sister. Test that brother. Whether they are of God. Okay, come on. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. You see that thing? So the Lord says, try the spirit. How do you try the spirit? You try the spirit by the spirit. What is the spirit? Give me that in Romans 7 verse 14. You know what? Give me 1 Corinthians. Let's use that one. 1 Corinthians 2. You try the spirit by the spirit. Okay. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Read verse 14. Watch this. 
First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Come on. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. You see that? The natural man is the sinful man, the sinful sister. That's the natural man. Is that they're not going to receive the things of the Spirit of God. What is that? Spiritual things, the commandments of the law, the mysteries, the testimonies of the law. Right? For they are foolishness unto him. They are foolishness unto him. Meaning what? You must keep the Passover. Observe the, 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 observe the Sabbath day. They're going to look at you like you crazy. So I'm not supposed to buy on Saturday. Yes, that says the law. That is going to, that's foolishness unto him. Because what? Read on. Neither can he know them mm -hmm. because they are spiritually discerned. Because the spiritual things must be discerned spiritually. You have to be spiritual for you to discern spiritual things. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Stop right there. But he that is spiritual will judge all things. What makes a man or woman spiritual? Because you hear that a lot in the world. You see, me, I'm so I'm a spiritual person. Me, I'm a spiritual this. Let's see what it means to be spiritual. Hold this. Give me Romans 7 verse 14. Let's see what it means to be spiritual. Because I hear that a lot. I'm so spiritual. I'm so this. Let's see if that's true. Romans 7 verse 14. Read that. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual. You see that? For we know that the law is spiritual. So if you say you're spiritual, it means you're keeping the commandments of the Lord. So whenever you hear somebody says, I'm spiritual, I, if, well, now that you know how it's supposed to translate in your head is, oh, so you mean you keep the commandments. Then you start to look at them. Well, no, please. They're wearing pants. She's a sister. She's wearing pants. So that's not spiritual. That's a, that's a, that's a carnal sister right there. Okay, he doesn't have a beard, he's got cheap pop on his head, he smokes and all that. Hmm, that's not a spiritual man. You understand? That's a kind of brother right there. He still doesn't have sense yet. He still does not have the spirit of the Lord on them yet. You understand? So go back to First Corinthians. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 again. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Read. Right? But he that is spiritual judges all things. You see that? But he that keeps the laws of God, you are you be able to judge all things. Go ahead. Yet he himself is judged of no man. What that means is, is that yet he himself is judged of no man, meaning what? Nobody's going to judge you of the things that you're judging against, meaning because you are not in the midst of that sin. So you're not judging in hypocrisy. You understand? That's what he's going into. So now go back. First John chapter 4, verse 1. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Whether they are of God. So try the spirits whether they keep the commandments of the Lord or not. Do they believe what the Bible says? Go ahead. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Because there's going to be a lot of deceitful brothers and sisters. You understand? So you need the laws of God to prove them. Whether they keep the laws of God, they believe what the Bible says, and they do what this Bible says. Because many people, they say, I love the Lord, but they don't want to do what the Lord says. They say, Jesus is in my heart, but guess what? They're still sleeping around. They are tracking. They are showing their cleavage and all that. No, no, no. Jesus is not in your heart. Satan is in your heart. You understand? Understand that. So that's why the Lord says, prove them first. Don't be too quick to credit them. You understand? Now, watch this. A lot of the times what you're going to see is that in this truth, because when you come into this truth, the most that God is requiring each and every one of us to repent. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 14. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 verse 34. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 verse 34. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. You see what the Bible says? You must subdue your own understanding. To subdue means to let go, to relinquish. Meaning let go of anything and everything that you were taught in the world. Whatever understanding you thought you had, you don't know nothing when you come into this truth. 
you are a blank canvas. You understand? Go ahead. And reform your heart. And reform your heart, meaning what? You must be born again. That's what Christ, that's what Ezra is saying here. Wait. Ye shall be kept alive. Mm -hmm. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. When the Lord is dead. So the Lord is teaching us says you must subdue your own understanding. Meaning what? Change your thinking. Be born again. Repent. So if you used to be a gossiper in the world, when you come into in Israel, you cannot be running your black mouth. No. Because the most high God is against that. If you, you cause, guess what? What's happened, the reason why you see people be fighting in the world and all that, there's backstabbing, you know, is because there's a gossiper, there's a mamara, mam kopoz, okay? And you have men that mama as well, you have men that be proposing just like women. You can't make this up. And that's not the spirit that the Lord is looking for, okay? Watch this. Give me Leviticus 19, verse 16. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Read. Right. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Stop right there. He says, don't go up and down as a talebearer among your people. Meaning what? Don't be going around doing what? Gossiping among your people. So don't be gossiping. You understand? Gossip is a sin. That's the reason why many of our people, the first generation in the wilderness, they all got put to death. Because of what? Murmuring, tailberry, running their big black mouth with their black gown. Read again. Verse 16. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Read. Right? Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. You see what happens when you tailbear, when you like to gossip, when you like to run your mouth, speaking things you ought not. The Lord says, you're standing against the blood of your neighbor. That means you hate your neighbor. You don't apply the royal law. You, the devil, the Bible speaks of. You understand? So the most that God don't want this. And sisters, they like that thing. Sisters, they tend to gossip. They tend to run their mouth. Okay? And I've picked up a couple of things in the congregation among the sisters. Just be running their black mouth. Sisters, it's time to repent. We will not tolerate that. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me the book of James, chapter 3. Because the apostle James, he, he, he addressed this thing. Okay, the Apostle James. The Apostle James addressed this thing. And guess what? Brothers, they do this as well. Okay, some of you brothers, I talked to you about that. Stop running your mouth. You always be running your mouth all the time, like a woman. Watch this. Give me that in James 3. James chapter 3. Okay. James 3, read verse 5. Watch this. James chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. Even so, the tongue is a little member. The tongue is a little member, meaning it's a small organ in your in your body, right? Watch this. And boasted great things. Boasted great things, speaking things you ought not. Go ahead. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. You see what it says? The, the, this little member, which is the tongue, will, will what it says, how great a matter a little fire it will kindle. It will kindle a fire, right? And the tongue is a fire. Read verse 6 again. James chapter 3 verse 6. Go ahead. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. You see that? He says, a tongue is a fire, a world, a world of iniquity, a world of sin. Because whatever is in your tongue is in your mind, is in your spirit. Go ahead. So is the tongue among our members. You see that? So is the tongue among the congregation. The tongue among our members in the congregation. Go ahead. That it defileth the whole body. It's going to destroy everything we're trying to say. That's why when I see gossip, I shut it down. I don't like that thing. Because the most high God is against it. Right? And set it on fire the course of nature. The tongue will set on fire the course. It will change the course of nature itself. That's what the Lord is, is showing of you. So guess what? Tell Berry will what will defile the whole boat, will cause problems in the congregation. 
understand it. Go ahead. And it is set on fire of hell. It's set on fire of hell. That's why the most that God wants to make sure. You brothers that are married and you brothers that are yet to get married, you understand? Always make sure your wife comes to you, your wife be running her mouth, you know your wife is a tail bearer, she got it. Your job is to shut that down because if you don't, she's going to make you a laughing stock and you will not be fit to rule and lead your nation. Understand that? The most I will not use you. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 7. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed. It says, for every is because every kind of beast, meaning beast of the, uh, of the earth, the bear, the serpent, the creeping thing, is as and of things in the sea. He's quoting Genesis. Is that they are tamed. They have an order. They have a limit to how far they can go. But not the black man with, a big, with his big mouth. Not the black woman with their black mouth. The Lord says, those creatures, they are tamed. Watch this. Go ahead. And has been tamed of mankind. Have been tamed of mankind. They can be controlled. Watch this. Go ahead. But the tongue can no man tame. You see that thing? But because every creation that God has made, the animals, the birds of the air, you understand? The creatures in the sea and all that. Yes, they behave exactly how the Lord commanded them. The only creation of God on this earth that has free will is the black man and the black woman, mankind. We can choose and no, I don't want to follow this. Animals can't do this. You see that thing? And the main thing that is controlling that time. Go ahead. It is an unruly evil. You see that thing? The tongue is an unruly evil. So guess what? Because sisters are good for that and bra some brothers as well. But it says the tongue is an unruly evil. Because if the communication is not according to the laws of the Most High God, you're going to have evil in the congregation. You're going to be evil in your house. Wait. Full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. You see that thing? It's letting you know how dangerous that thing is. Understand that. It's, that's why it says don't stand against the blood of your neighbor because, because of the tongue. That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? Because of what murmuring and complaining. That's why, watch this. Give me that thing that chapter 18. I'm going to show you something this day. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 13. There's uh, Sarah chapter 13, verse 15. Read that for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 15. Right? Every beast loveth his like. You see that? Every beast loveth his like. So if you notice that gossip around you, that means you have that spirit in you. Go ahead. And every man loveth his neighbor. And every man loveth his neighbor. So beast loveth his life, man loveth his neighbor. According to kind. Go ahead. And the spirit within those kind. Come on. All flesh consulted according to kind. You see that? All flesh consulted according to kind. So you see somebody gossiping, you're already joining in gossiping, guess what? That's your kind right there. Okay, go ahead. And the man will cleave to his life. You see that thing? You'll gravitate towards that thing that you were not you. Because remember, the Lord says, when you come in, you must repent. Be born again. Convert. Get your mind right. But with reading, it says, all flesh consulted according to time. And a man will cleave to his life. You understand? Watch what happens next. Go ahead. Verse 17. What fellowship has the wolf with the lamb? What fellowship has the wolf with the lamb? The wolf will devour the lamb. So it's letting you know, worry. as long as there's gossip, guess what? Those that like to gossip will flock together. Those that, that hate order will flock together. Those that hate instruction and counsel will flock together. Those that love understanding and all that, they will also flock together because why? That's what their spirit is about. Their spirit is about that. They are not here for play to play games. They are not here for BS. They are here to build. 
And I see who those brothers are in the congregation. You understand? Read that again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 13, verse 17. Read. What fellowship had the wolf with the lamb? Mm. So the sinner with the godly. You see that? So it says, what does the sinner have to do with the God? They cannot come together because if they do, guess what? They, the sinner will devour the godly just like the wolf will devour the lamb. Understand that? Go ahead. What agreement is there between the hyena and a dog? Nothing. There is no agreement between the hyena and a dog. Go ahead. And what peace between the rich and the poor? Because the rich will exploit the poor. They cannot come on one accord. But, for, but they, the reason why they are able to come together is because of what? Because of evil. What brings the poor and the rich together is because of evil. Because the poor, ex, the rich exploit the poor. You understand? Go ahead. As the wild ass is the lion's prey in the wilderness, so the rich eat up the poor. You see that thing right there? So likewise, watch this. Read verse 20. Come on. Verse 20. As the proud hate humility. Stop right there. The proud hate humility. I guess the proud is the one that departs from the law. Humility is those, those that humble down to what the Bible says. The proud hate the law, so they hate those that humble down to what the Bible says. You understand? But when you see the proud come together with those that are humble to the laws of God, guess what? The proud wants to destroy the one that is humble to God's commandment. Likewise, gossiping, murmuring, complaining, speaking things that you ought not, guess what? That's going to cause a problem because we turn up there. We want to build the 12 tribes of Israel so we can get up out here and go home. Guess what? The proud will come among us. There will be Jews, the hungry. You see this thing? And if you have not dealt with that murmuring and gossiping and complaining spirit, when somebody new comes into the camp, you will gravitate towards them because that's what you always wanted to do. You just do it because you're looking around you're getting mad. You're looking around. You understand? You are offended inside because they, you cannot cough out whatever is in you because nobody will listen. But as soon as you see that spirit that has the same thing, you immediately jump there. Why? Because that thing is invading you, so you want to cough it out. You understand? Every beast loves his life. Read again. Verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 20. As the proud hate humility, mm. so does the rich abhor the poor. You see that? So does the rich abhor the poor. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. So you have to understand why you're here. You have to understand why the Lord called you here. And you know, it's not for some BS. The most that God is too big. And when you come in, you cannot be playing games. You understand? Now, that, speak, that gives me another... All this, watch this. I'm going to show you because this, the, 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 what I'm going over now is friendship. You understand? It, this is not friendship. This is friend ish. Okay? Watch this. Give me first King 12 verse 1. I'm going to show you something this day. Okay? I dealt with this. Let me deal with the brothers now. Some of you brothers, you hear, but you have that Jeroboam, you have the, you have the, you have the spirit of Rehoboam. That Rehoboam spirit, you understand? Watch this. First Kings chapter 12, read verse 1. We're going to start this. We're going to read down. that. Rehob that Rehoboam spirit, that's a demonic spirit right here. Watch this. First Kings 12, we're going to read one down. Come on. First Kings chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. And Rehoboam went to Shechem. For all Israel will come to Shechem to make him king. Read. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. So Jeroboam had fled from Solomon. Now Solomon is gone. Rehoboam is now the king. Go ahead. That they sent and called him, Jero and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, so now Jeroboam comes back. They speak to Rehoboam now. Watch this. Go ahead. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Mm. Now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father 
and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. So now they are saying, listen, your father put heavy yokes upon us. Now that your father is gone, listen, make the yoke lighter and we're going to serve you. They are taken to Rehoboam now. Wow. Go ahead. And he said unto them, depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. He says, listen, go away for three days so I seek counsel regarding this man. Go ahead. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old man that stood before Solomon, his father, while he had lived and said, hmm. how do you advise that I may answer these people? Stop right there. Read that again, verse 6. First Kings chapter 12, verse 6. Wait. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old man that stood before Solomon, his father, while he had lived and said, how do you advise that I may answer these people? So now you see as in, on, in verse 6, he just see God sent. Because it says, he consulted with the old man that stood before Solomon, his father. So King Solomon had counselors. He says, while he yet lived, wise man. And he said, how do ye advise that I may answer these people? How should I respond when they come back the third day. Hold this. Give me Sarah 8 verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 8. Go ahead. Despise not the discourse of the wise. You see that? He says don't despise the discourse of the wise. Meaning the counsel, the counsel of the wise men. Wait. But acquaint thyself with their proverbs. Acquaint yourself, acquaint yourself with their what with their wise things. You understand? Go ahead. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. So these wise men, they're gonna want you gonna they're gonna teach you instruction, you're gonna know how to serve great men with ease. Go ahead. Miss not the discourse of the elders. The wise men is the elders in the seat. Go ahead. For they also learned of their fathers. You see that thing? They also learned of their fathers. So this is was the what? This was the generational legacy of what? Of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Go ahead. And of them thou shalt learn understanding mm. and to give answer as need requireth. And to and to do what? And to give answer as need requireth. And to give answer as need requireth. Because remember, he said, go away for three days and um, return after three days, I'll give an answer. So he did well to go and consult, right? Hold it. Give me Sarah chapter 32. Okay, because guess what? Our forefather Sarah, he explained this thing. Sarah chapter 32. Um, read verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 14. Go ahead. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. You're going to receive discipline if you fear the Lord. What is it? The Lord's discipline is law. Go ahead. And they that seek him early shall find favor. If, if, you, seek him, if you seek the Lord early, you're going to find favor. Jump down to verse 18 now. Watch this. Verse 18. A man of counsel will be considerate. You see that? You want to find favor. You, 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 if you seek the Lord early, you will find favor. Because why? As a man of counsel, you are going to be considerate of the decision you are about to make. The state, the answer you are about to give. He says you must consider what you are about to respond to. A man of counsel will be considered. Will consider this. Go ahead. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. He's not daunted with fear because he's strange and he's proud. So that means the laws of God is not top of mind. So it's not daunted with fear, meaning the impact of the decision or the counsel you're about to give. He doesn't think about that. Go ahead. Even when of himself he had done without counsel. Because he doesn't use counsel. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Do nothing without advice. Mm. And when thou hast once done, repent not. Read that again, verse 19. But I'm going to show you what we just read in 1 Kings 12, verse 6. Read that again. It is just chapter 32, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Do nothing without advice. Read again. Do nothing without advice. Again. Do nothing without advice. Again. Do nothing without advice. 
Do nothing without advice. Some of you, you don't, you don't see cancer. You just wing it. You forgot or before you came into this field, every decision you made was a poor decision. I don't care what decision it was. Every decision you made was a terrible and poor decision. When you come in Israel, you're still moving with that dumb Negro spirit. The Bible says what? Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 19. Go ahead. Do nothing without advice. It says don't do anything without advice. Read. And when thou was once done, repent not. It says, and once you've done it, meaning once you've gone for advice, it says repent not, meaning don't stop. Keep going for advice. Some of you, when you first came in, you seek counsel so you can get your mind right. Now, because you're comfortable, you no longer seek counsel no more. You know why? The spirit has left. Let me repeat myself in case I started. You first came in, you were zealous of the law, or so you made it look like you were. Now, because you're comfortable now, guess what? You no longer think that it's necessary for you to seek advice. Now you just do things. You know why? The spirit has left the building. Sooner or later, you'll be back in the world, physically. Spiritually, you're already there. But physically, you are here with us. You understand? Eventually, you're going to leave. Understand that? Because now you're trusting in the what? In the wickedness of your own mind. Remember what the Lord says about the, the mind. He says the mind is wicked and desperate. Desperately wicked. When you see yourself, you're not seeking counsel no more. The spirit has left because now you think you are someone. You understand? You think now, no, I got this. Okay. Read again, verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Do nothing without advice. Read. And when thou hast once done, repent not. Now watch this. Because when you go now, you do not do, you don't do with counsel no more. Read verse 21. Watch this. Verse 21. Be not confident in a plain way. That's you. You are now confident in a plain way. I'll give an example. Because some of you, you are window shopper. You window shop. And... Because I can see, I can tell you even in your speech. Like I told you, I've, there were many here, they were doing that. Where are they now? They are back in the world, they are not even doing nothing for the nation. You understand? And some of you, you have not learned your lesson yet. You have gone back to the same, you've gone back to the same black hole. Guess what? We're not going to pull you out. You're on your own on this one. You understand? We're not going to allow you to come and poison anybody, any one of us. Some of you, you watch YouTube videos, you take a precept, you don't understand what you take. You need to actually start with this down and study. You seek counsel to understand what you read. You understand? Because you don't know what to look for. You don't. And now when a demon fly on your head, guess what? Now you have to leave us because you're going to infect everybody in the congregation. Now jump back up to verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 19. Go ahead. Do nothing without advice. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast once done, repent not. You see that? Repent not. Now, go back to 1 Kings 12 verse 6. Because at this point, it would seem that he's moving in the right spirit. Okay? But we're going to later find out that he was not moving in the right spirit. 1 Kings 12 verse 6. You know why I read this? It says, once you've once done, repent not. But because he repented. He never went back to go seek counsel again. We're going to show you that. First Kings 12 verse 6. So that lay of home spirit. You seek counsel. When you receive the counsel, guess what? You don't apply the counsel. But you make it seem like you are seeking counsel because you want to say, you know what? Yes, I did meet this week for counsel and all that to get my mind right to understand certain things and all that. So, so that we can, you can just say, no, but I did. That's what Rehoboam is doing. Some of you have that Rehoboam spirit. Read chapter 12 and 6 again. First Kings chapter 12 and 6. Go ahead. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old man that stood before Solomon, his father, yeah. while he yet lived and said, Wait. How do you advise that I may answer these people? 
Mm -hmm. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto these people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. It says, speak good words to them. What are the good words? Give me Romans 7, verse 12. This is the good words that they are commanding him to speak unto the people. Speak good words unto them. Okay. Romans 7, verse 12. Let's read. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. You see that you see the good words that he was commanded to speak unto the people, the laws of God. Okay, now go back. First Kings 12. Read verse, read verse 8. Watch what happened here. First Kings chapter 12, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But he forsook the counsel of the old man. What did he do? But he forsook the counsel of the old man. And what does the Lord say? Go back to Sarah 32, verse 19 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 19. Go ahead. Do nothing without advice. Mm. And when thou hast once done, repent not. You see that? When thou hast once done, repent not. He done it once and he repented. Meaning what? He never went back for the counsel. Instead, he forsook the counsel of the old man. You see this thing? Because Rehoboam was done. Rehoboam was a child. Rehoboam was a dumb Negro. Okay? Read verse 8 again. First Kings 12. First Kings chapter 12 verse 8. Go ahead. But he forsook the counsel of the old man, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. Stop right there. What did he do? And consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. You see that thing? But instead of listening to the counsel of the old man, he decided he consulted with the young man that he grew up with. You see that? What is the young man going to give? What type of advice is the young man going to give? Nothing. Because they don't know nothing. You know what their job is? Give me Sarak 6. I'm going to show you what the job of the young man is. Okay? Sarak 6. Read verse 18. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 18. Mm -hmm. My son, Gather instruction from thy youth up. You see that thing? That's the mindset of the young. The young man's job is to gather instruction from his youth up. Because he cannot give any advice whatsoever. Why? He says, gather instruction from your youth up. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. So shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. Then you're going to get wisdom in your old age. You understand? Because then when you grow older, that's when you receive that wisdom. You understand? Go ahead. Come unto her as one that plowers and soweth. The hair is wisdom. It says, come unto wisdom as one that plowers and soweth. Because why? You want to labor to understand the wisdom of the law. Right? And wait for her good fruits. Wait for her good fruits, meaning the understanding. You must wait for that understanding. And it takes time and years to receive that. Go ahead. For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, mm -hmm. but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. Meaning what? In due season, when it's your time. You understand? But guess what? The young men are not going to tell you nothing because their job is to gather instruction from their youth. That's the law. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. Go ahead. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. Stop right there. Is a speak, young man, if there's a need for you to speak. As a young man, there's no need for you to say nothing. Just be quiet. That's what the Lord is saying. But he consulted with the young man that grew up with him. You understand? They had no business saying nothing to him because there's no advice that we're going to give him that was going to benefit the nation. That was a speak, young man, if they be need of thee. There's no need for young men to speak. Go ahead. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Because hardly will you be asked. You understand? Go ahead. Let thy speech be short. Meaning let your speech be short. Keep it short and to the point. Go ahead. 
comprehending much in few words. You must comprehend much in few words because why? You're not saying nothing. You comprehend it. Your job is to receive. You gather those instructions. Go ahead. Be as one that knows and yet hold it his tongue. Is as be as one that knows and but you're holding your tongue. So what is he saying? Young men don't know anything. So he says, your job is, guess what? At that point, you must hold your tongue and open your ears. You understand? Go ahead. If thou be among great men. If you remember what we read in Dracut, verse 9. You understand? It is of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to say great men with thee. When you are among great men, go ahead. Make not thyself equal with them. Don't make yourself equal with great men. And that's the thing that young, that's, that's what black men do. Black men hate order, they hate law, they hate structure, they hate counsel. They just want to do their own thing in Israel. You understand? So, but the Lord is telling you, he says, if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. Don't equal yourself to them. Because they've been laboring more and longer than you have. He says, don't make yourself equal with them. Okay, go ahead. And when ancient men are in place, when, men, when ancient men are in place, go ahead. Use not many words. You see that thing right there? Use not many words. He's not saying don't speak. He says, no when to speak. You understand? And yet, scarcely when thou art quite asked. You, you see that thing? Some of you, you just, you just like to run your mouth. You understand? And guess what? New programming, new program is running. You understand? You're going to get a rude awakening. I'm telling you straight up. Okay? A rude awakening. The Lord is saying right there, says, if thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. I mean, shut the hell up. You understand? Shut the hell up. Always turn and make it seem like when you don't know that, just be quiet. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. And some of you, some of you, you you've been demoted. Now you, you you regain your your position again, but you have not learned nothing from what the, the evil that you you have not learned anything. You're still repeating the same thing again. You understand? It's like a deer in a headline. Because why? You don't see cancer, you think you're on some level. You understand? And that's guess what? You are bound to repeat the same thing. You are bound to repeat it again because you don't you don't learn. You know why you're not gonna learn? Watch this. Hold this. Uh, hmm. Give me first Peter. Okay, give me first Peter. We're still dealing with Rehoboam. Because Rehoboam, what he did is that Rehoboam did not have friends. You know what? Hmm. Drop that. What I wanted to get, get the right phone first. Let me show you the spirit that they were born was moving in. Track 47. Um, track 47 and verse 23. Track 47, verse 23. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 23. Go ahead. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers, and of his seed he left behind him Rehoboam, even the foolishness of the people. You see that thing? Rehoboam was the foolishness of the people. He was dumb as hell. Right? And one that had no understanding. He had no understanding. Because he's a young man, he's supposed to have gathered instruction from the elders around him. He didn't do it. He rejected the counsel of the old man. Right? Who turned away the people through his counsel. He turned away the people through his wicked counsel that he received from his dumb friends that he grew up with. Go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that. Okay. So, Watch this. Let's go back now. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 12. Okay. Read verse 8 one more again. 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 8. Come on. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. Right. And which stood before him. And we stood before him. So they are the ones that decided, you know what? Hmm. Any, mini, mini, more. This is what we're gonna give them, because that's how they 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 they, they don't they are not considered. Now we read in chapter two. It says the men of council will be considered. These young men, they had no consideration whatsoever, because for you to consider, you have to have 
some level of wisdom to consider the options and the impact of the decision you're about to make. You understand? Go ahead. And he said unto them, what counsel give ye that we may answer these people? And he said unto them, this is, he said to the young men, what counsel give ye that we may answer you people? You see that part right there? I'm going to show you something heavy here. Read it again, verse 9. I'm going to show you something. First Kings chapter 12, verse 9. Hmm. And he said unto them, what counsel give ye that we may answer these people? Stop right there. You, you see what just happened here? What just happened here is Rehoboam is the king. Rehoboam as the king, you see what he's doing? He says, what counsel give ye that we may answer these people? Rehoboam now is equating himself with the young man. You, you see this thing? That's what he's doing. Now we are on the same level. That's this thing. That's the spirit he's moving with. He says, what counsel give ye that we may answer these people? Now he's on the same level. Or rather, they are on the same level as him. That's the spirit of Rehoboam. He was dumb as hell. Go ahead. Who have spoken to me, saying, make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter? You see that thing? Because that's what they said in verse 4. Go ahead. And the young man that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto these people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy. Mm. But make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. You see that thing? It says, I'm going to be harder. It says, make the yoke harder. You understand? Make it harder than your father's loins. They were disrespectful. It says, make the yoke harder than your father's loins. That's what he's telling them. That's what they are telling this dumb nigga. Rebo. You see this thing right here? So, guess what? That's the spirit was moving in. Guess what? Some of you, you have that spirit, right? You don't understand. That's why black men don't understand order. You understand? One thing that I hate and despise is black men that hate, they get offended when order is given out. You are given counsel over and over about the same thing. Guess what? You still don't correct it. You, because you think this is a place to hang out. No, this is not a place to hang out. You understand? We are here to build the nation of Israel. We are here to wake the 12 tribes of Israel up. If you think this is a place to hang out, listen, your days are numbered. I'm telling you straight up. Because guess what? You're going to be, you are a hindrance. You are, you are a, a hindrance to this truth. You are the enemy of progress. You're going to cause us problems in the future. Understand that. So make sure that you get your mind back. Some of you think, you know, you, I don't see, I see you. I see you, but there's too much work to be done. You understand? And there's going to be a time when it, it will be dealt with and you're going to be shocked. No, don't be shocked. You understand? Do not be shocked. Keep going. And now, whereas my father did lay you with the heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. Mm. My father had chastised you with whips, but I will test us you with scorpions. You see what he's doing? He says, I'm going to make it worse. I'm going to make the situation worse now. I'm going to miss God. Right now, they are not applying charity. Now you love your neighbors yourself. They are not doing it. You understand? Go ahead. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. Mm -hmm. And the king answered the people roughly, and forsook the old man's counsel that they gave him. You see that thing? He forsook the old man's counsel that they gave him. He said, to hell with that. I'm going to tell them what my, my friends told me to tell you. So at this point, he's not thinking about the nation. He's not thinking about that. He's, he's just thinking, this is just me and my friend. They recall high school. Some of you, I can't tell you about this thing. No, we are we recall primary. We are in high school. Hmm? We are in kindergarten. Because they are not thinking about the nation. They are thinking high school stuff. You understand? Go ahead. And spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. Mm. My father also chastised you with whips, 
but I will chastise you with scorpions. But I want to show you the impact because remember it says you must be considerate if you are a man of counsel, right? Rehoboam was not a man of counsel. He was, he was a demon. He was not a man of counsel. So now look at the impact of the decision that he has made. Watch this. Next verse. Go ahead. Wherefore, the king hearkened not unto the people, mm. for the cause was from the Lord. The Moses is the one that ordained him to be done. Go ahead. That he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahiah, the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Wait. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Mm. Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Wait. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. You see that thing? This is now the, the split. Now the nation has split into two now. You see the impact of the decision he made? But he didn't consider it. He was not considerate of the decision, the impact, the, the consequences of the decision that he made. Because he was running on what? He was running on high, high school job. Running on primary school stuff. Kindergarten stuff. The mind is still the mind of a puppy. You understand? He just want to play. Listen. Look at the impact of the decision he made. He wasn't considered. Give me that in track seven. Okay. It is Yastikas, chapter 7, read verse 36. Watch this. It is Yastikas, chapter 7, verse 36. Go ahead. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, mm. remember the end. You see that? Rehoboam didn't consider the end. He took the, the great matter that was before him he didn't think about the impact of the decision he's going to make, how he's going to judge that matter, and what will be the consequence thereof. Go ahead. And thou shalt never do amiss. And he did do amiss because he forsook the counsel of the old man. Because they did take in the counsel of the old man. This is what was going to happen. Give me Sarah 24. Okay. Um, Sarah. Yeah. Sir, no, Sarah 18. Sirach chapter 18, read verse 27. Start there. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 27. Go ahead. A wise man will fear in everything. Mm. And in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense. You see that thing? A wise man will fear in everything. And in the day of sinning, meaning when what? When the child come upon him, he says he will, be, he will beware of the offense. Go ahead. But a fool will not observe time. The fool will not observe time. Leobom didn't observe the time. You understand? Because he was not a wise man. He was the foolishness of the people who knew not nothing. He had no understanding. Go ahead. Every man of understanding knoweth wisdom. A man of understanding knoweth wisdom, which is the laws of God. Right? And will give praise unto him that found her. You see that thing? The man of wisdom will give praise unto him and to a man that finds wisdom. You understand? He will be commended for that wisdom that is God. Next verse. Watch this. They that were of understanding in sayings became also wise themselves. You see that? It says they that were of understanding in sayings, they became also wise themselves. Because why? They learned from the aged men. You understand? And guess what? Rehoboam, had he listened to the old man, he was also going to do what? Read on. And poured forth exquisite parables. He was going to pour out exquisite parables. He was going to give them a wise answer. He was going to give an answer that would be what? That was going to protect the nation. That was going to what? That was going to make the, the, our nation to be glorious. Bring honor to our nation. But he wasn't considered. You understand? Because he was not a man of understanding. He wanted, he, he thought he was, he, the friends that he grew up with, he was equal with them. That's crazy. That's some evil stuff. That's why me, me, I don't play that game. I can love, but when I see evil, I will correct it. And guess what? You get offended, guess what? You get, you get to my life. If you can't, kick rocks. But, understand that. Just because we love with you, some of you, you think, no, we are on, no, not on the same level. We're not the same. It's amazing how in, 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 in Jesus' plantation, 
black men, they know their place. When you come in Israel with the most high God laws, you think, no, no, everybody's all the same. That's the spirit of Korah, Zatan, and Abiram, who wanted to make themselves equal with Moses. And the Lord, how did he reward them? Did he reward them? Did he pat them on the back? No, he put them to death. He killed them. You understand? He put those Negroes to death. Because of what? Because they did not know their place. They did not want to take, they did not want to take um, time to learn and to grow. You understand? That requires patience. You understand? That thing requires patience like this. Okay? Now, go back to verse Kings 12. Read verse 16 one more again. First Kings chapter 12, verse 16. Mm -hmm. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Go ahead. To your tents, O Israel. Mm. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. You see that? So now this is the, the actual, this is the official split. You understand? Now, let's go back to the right six. Ecclesiastical chapter six. Okay. Thrag six, read verse eight. Because I'm going to show you that what happened with Rehoboam, this is what happened. Watch this. Read verse, verse eight. Ecclesiastical chapter six, verse eight. Mm. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Because guess what? Those those young men that grew up with Rehobo, they were only there for their own occasion, you understand? To exercise their childish behavior upon the kingdom and the state of the nation. Right? And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. Where are they now? Did they abide in the day of Israel's trouble? No. Okay, come on. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. You see that thing? That, that's exactly what it says. And uh, is, as there is a friend who being tempted to enemy, meaning tempted to, to an enemy, and they, that, now you have strife because there's evil in the midst. He says, we'll discover their reproach. Now, guess what? Now they're going to stand by their side when trouble befalls you. You understand? Go ahead. Again, some you friend know what? Is You notice that you don't even hear about them after, after they gave uh, advice to Rehoboam. You don't even hear about them. They are not mentioned when you read down. They are not mentioned at all. Even. Those dumb friends that gave uh, advice to Rehoboam, they are not even mentioned in you. You, you see this? Read that verse again. Verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 9. Read. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover their reproach. You see that thing? They will discover their reproach. Now they realize that, listen, there's some evil that is, this decision has caused great evil in Israel. They are not even mentioned because they are nowhere to be found. Go ahead. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. No, because he was the king. He was the king. You understand? Go ahead. And will not continue in the day of thy affliction. They are not going to continue in the day of your affliction. Because when judgment comes, you understand? Guess what? They are not going to continue with you in the day of your trial, in the day of your affliction. But because when you think you're acting like a child, you don't want to grow up, guess what? It says they are not going to continue with you in the day of your affliction. They will not. They will scatter. Just like they scattered when Christ was crucified. The only one that was there was the apostle John, whom he loved. Okay, go ahead. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself. When everything is good, he's going to behave just like he's going to be. He's going to be for you. He's going to say, I'm supporting you, but just a damn lie. You understand? A damn lie. Because one thing you don't understand, hold this, let me show you something. Give me the book of Jude. Give me the apostle Jude. I'm going to show you what, you what this is going into. Okay, give me the Apostle Jude. Read verse... Yes. Read verse 12. Jude, verse 12. Hmm. Watch this. 
the book of Jude, verse 12. Come on. These are sports in your feasts of charity. Stop right there. He says, these are sports in the feast or in your feasts of charity. We come together. Uh, you understand? We come together during, you know, the high holidays and so forth. Is that these are sports, meaning these wicked Negroes, is that they are sports in your feast of charity. When we come together, the love of the brethren, the love of neighbors, right? And guess what? We come from camp and all that. We talk about what happened at camp, we strategize and so forth, we go over scriptures. Some brothers, they're just sitting there, they're just waiting for something to go wrong. He said, You see, I'm telling you. You might think they are not, you know, they are among us. Understand. Keep going. When they feast with you. When they feast with you, go ahead. Feeding themselves without fear. Feeding themselves without fear. There is no fear of the Lord. Because they are not here for the nation. They are here for the food. Go ahead. Clouds they are without water. He says they are clouds without water. You see, you see, it looks like it's going to rain, but nothing comes out, comes of it. Okay, go ahead. Carry the power of winds. Car carry the power of winds. Hold this. Give me Hebrews 13. I'm going to show you the, 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 the winds that they are carried about with. You understand? Hebrews chapter 13. Might be verse 9. Hebrews 13 verse 9. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 9. Go ahead. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. You see that? They are carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. They are window shoppers. So they are carried about with diverse and strange doctrines while they feast with you. Carried about of wings. Give me Ephesians 4, 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Carried about with wings. Strange and diverse doctrines. Okay, watch this. Ephesians 4, verse 14. Read that thing for me. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Go ahead. That we henceforth be no more children. Mm -hmm. Because that we henceforth be no more children. So he's talking to those that were acting like kids. Go ahead. Tossed to and fro. You see that thing? They are tossed to and fro because they are not steadfast in their understanding. Like we went over last night. When it says be steadfast in Salah 5 verse 10. Read. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. You see that thing? They are carried about with every wind of doubt because they are unstable. They are not rooted and grounded in love. They don't have a foundation. Okay, go ahead. Ephesians 4 verse 14. Yes, sir. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. Go ahead. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doubt by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't be carried about with every wind of doctrine, window shoppers. It says, by the slight of men, the deceit or trickery of men, and cunning craftiness, meaning what? It's going to sound good, okay, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, to deceive, to deceive, the simple Negroes. Because Satan can tell, oh, okay, you're not interested in God. No problem. You are going to be deceived with cunning craftiness. You're not going to give, you know, you, you won't even see, you won't even see you, you are being deceived. He says cunning craftiness. You understand? Whereby they lie in way to deceive. It's going to sound good, but you have no foundation. You understand? That's what he said right there. So go back to Jude. Read verse 12 again. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. These are sports in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Clouds they are without water. Rain. Carried about of wind. Carried about of wind, meaning strange and dive in sin. Strange and diverse doctrines. Every wind of strange doctrine. Go ahead. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withered. You see that thing? is a trees whose fruit is withered. Because your fruit is your fruit of understanding. 
is a tree, your fruit is withering. You understand? Go ahead. Without fruit, mm. twice day. You see that thing? Without without growth, twice day. You were dead in the world, you come into the truth, you you what? You learn who you are, and guess what? You start to die because why? You are unsafe. You are not focused, you are not diligent. You understand? Go ahead. Plucked by the roots. Plucked up by the roots. You are going to be plucked up by what? By the winds of doctrine because you are being talked to and fro. Why? Because it's still a child. That's what the Lord is saying. So take heed to this thing. Go back to where was that now? Let's go back. Sarak chapter 6. Sarak 6 and verse Sarak 6 verse 10. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 10. Go ahead. Again, some friend is a companion at the table mm. and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. They are not going to continue in the day of your affliction. Go ahead. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And will be bold over thy servants. He is going to be bold over your servants. There is going to be evil telling your servants what to do. Hey, don't do this, do that, do that, do that, do that. They're going to be bold over your servants. Why? Because, he says, their, their, their behavior is based on what? Some friend is a companion at the table. Will not continue in the day of your affliction, but in thy prosperity, you will be as thyself. You see that thing? When there's growth, they're going to be as yourself. They're even going to be bold over your death. You understand? Go ahead. If thou be brought low, hmm. it will be against thee. They're going to smite the shepherd and the flock will scatter. That's what we read in here. If thou be brought low, it says he will be against thee. Now, they're going to stand by thy side. They're going to stand on the side while you're going through it. Go ahead. And will hide himself from thy face. He's going to hide himself from your face. Understand, understand, understand. Go ahead. Separate thyself from thine enemies. What did the Bible say? Separate thyself from thine enemies. Separate yourself from your enemies. Watch this. Let me show you something. Go back to the verse you were reading. Verse 12. Track 6, verse 12. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 12. Come on. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee. Uh -huh. And will uh, and will hide himself from thy faith. Watch this. He says, if you are brought low, he will be against you. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 17. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Let me show you true friendship. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 17. Go ahead. A friend love it at all times. He says a friend will love at all times. Whether things are good or whether things are bad, they will love at all times. Go ahead. And a brother is born for adversity. A brother is born for trial. You're going to see who's your friend when the trials come up. You're going to see who's with you, who's, who's for the mission when the trials pop up. You're going to see who's really for this truth. When the trouble and trouble comes, when we are tired as a congregation, you're going to see who's really, who's really with us. You're going to see that. You will see it on that day, who was really with, with us and who was not. Read that again, verse 17. The book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loveth times, mm -hmm. and a brother is born for adversity. Hold on, one thing. Okay, I'm sorry. Read that again. Verse 17. The book of Proverbs, chapter 17, verse 17. Read. A friend loveth at all times. Mm -hmm. And a brother is born for adversity. You see that thing? A brother is born for adversity. So when trouble comes, a true brother, a true friend will be right there by your side. Look at what they are. Let's go back to the book of John. Come go back to John 19. You understand? Go back to John, John chapter 19. The apostle John, whom Christ loved. John chapter 19. Read verse 26 again. 
The book of John, chapter 19, verse 26. Come on. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the, and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, mm -hmm. he says unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Woman, behold thy son. Why? Because guess what? The apostle John was the only one that was there by Christ's side when he died on the cross. You understand? He was right there. He was a loyal brother. He was extremely loyal. His level of faith and loyalty, listen, it was unmatched. You understand? So that's what we read in Proverbs 17, 17. Now go back to the right six now. Read verse 12 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 12. Go ahead. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee mm -hmm. and will hide himself from thy face. You see that thing? There, guess what? That's not a true friend right there. That is not a true friend. When trouble comes, he's going to run. Go ahead. Separate thyself from thine enemies. What did he say? Separate thy, thyself from thine enemies. So from verse 9 all the way to verse 12, that, 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 those, that's the characteristics of what your enemies are like. Those are your enemies. That's why it says separate yourself from thine enemies. Separate. That's what it's telling you right there. Go ahead. And take heed of thy friends. And take heed of your friends. Meaning what? Beware of your friends. Because guess what? Not everybody is here for to serve the Lord. You understand? Not everybody is here for that. Give me that in Jeremiah. I'm going to show you that. Not, every, not everyone is here because they want to serve the Lord. Give me that in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 4. Go ahead. Take ye heed, every one of his neighbor. You see that thing? It is a take ye heed, every one of his neighbor. Beware. Go ahead. And trust ye not in, in any brother. It says, don't trust in any brother. I want you to put some power in your read. And trust ye not in any brother. Just because they've got fringes and a bottle of blue, the Lord says, don't trust. Go ahead. For every brother will utterly supplant. It says, for every brother will utterly supplant, meaning what? They want to overthrow. That's black people's work. You understand? They are looking at it, they are waiting for your fall so they can say, it's my time now to take over. Read that again, read that again, verse, verse 4, again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 4. Read. Take ye every one of his name. And trust him not in any brother. Come on. For every brother will utterly suffer. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. You see that thing? Every neighbor will walk with slanders. Meaning what? Hatred for the leadership. That's what black people do there. That's what black people do. I'm telling you straight. Black people, they do that stuff. You understand? And guess what? When we come into the truth, you're not supposed to be moving like a black person. You're supposed to be moving like an Israelite. But guess what? Even in Israel, you still find black people in Israel. Go ahead. Meaning their mindset. Go ahead. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor. You see that thing? They will deceive everyone his neighbor. Make you believe that they're here. Make you believe that they believe this too. Make you believe that, listen, I will be here when, when things pop up. I will, they will make you believe that thing. Go ahead. And will not speak the truth. They have just lied. Go ahead. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Come on. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. They tire themselves to commit iniquity. Meaning what? They live for that thing. That's what the Lord is saying. That's what the Most High God is telling. Okay. Now, go back to Drag 6, verse 13 again. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 6, verse 18. Read. Separate thyself from thine enemies. Mm -hmm. And take heed of thy friends. And take heed of your friends. Come on. A faithful friend is a strong defense. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Against what? Against evil. Against what? Against the day of your child. Because what is a faithful, what will a faithful friend do? Watch this. Hmm. Give me the book of, give me the book. Um, 
I'm shooting from the hip, it's not part of my nose, but let me get it in. Give me that scripture in Ecclesiastes. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Come on. Two are better than one. You see that? It says two are better than one. Come on. Because they have a good reward for their labor. They have a good reward of their labor. They, they want, we're laboring in this truth to bring forth Zion. It says we have a good reward of our labor. What is the labor? The reward? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Living forever. Come on. For if they fall, mm -hmm. the one will lift up his fence. You see that thing? Because if you fall, it says one will lift up your fence. That's why it says a faithful friend is a strong defense. Because if you fall, they will lift you up. Come on. But woe unto him, hold to him that is alone when he falls. You see that thing? Then don't be an individual life. Because when you fall, nobody going to pick you up. Come on. For he has not another to help him up. You see that? He has not another to help him up. Go ahead. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. You see that? If two lie together, then they have heat. Because what? You comfort. He's going into comfort. Go ahead. But how can one be warm alone? You see that thing? How are you going to be comforted by yourself? Right? And if one prevail against two shall withstand him. You see that thing? If one prevail against him, it says two will withstand. Watch this. Come on. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You see, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. If there's three of you, you're not easily, you're not easily going to fall. That's what he's saying right there. What is he teaching us? Unity. The proper friendship, that's why it says, go back to where he was at now. Track 6, okay? Track chapter 6, verse 14 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 14. Read. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Mm. And he that has found such an one has found a treasure. You see that thing? If you find such a friend, the Lord says you found a treasure. Because that type of friend is hard to find. You're going to find them where? In the scripture, in the body, in the congregation. They keep the commandments of the Lord. You keep the commandments of the Lord. You understand? There must be order. Don't forget that thing. Watch this. It says, it, it, it says, it says read, that, read that last part again. It says what? Um, and, and, he, he, he that what? and he that has found such an one has found a treasure. He, he that found such an one has found a treasure. Because why? A treasure, a treasure is something that is hard to find. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of uh, Matthew chapter 18 verse 44. Watch this. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 44. Read. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. You see that? It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hid in the field. So what, what I'm showing you is a good friend, remember, a faithful friend, which is the friendship that you make in the truth based on the commandments of the most high God. You understand? You need friendly. So it says, a faithful friend is a strong defense. And he that has found such an one has found a treasure. Guess what? You do find that that faithful friend, which is like a treasure, and that is, is letting you know they are hard to find. You understand? Just like the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. Because you have a faithful friend in the truth, which is what? Brothers and sisters that believe on Christ. Together, we're going to what? We're going to labor to find the kingdom of heaven that is like a treasure that is hid in the field. You can only do that with a faithful friend, which is brothers and sisters that believe on Christ, that keep the commandments. So together we can work together to work and labor for the kingdom of heaven that is like a treasure that is hidden in field. It also is hard to find. Go ahead. The which, when a man has found, he hideth, and mm -hmm. for joy therefore goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. You see what he's saying? He says, listen, you, when you find this treasure, you're going to sell everything you got just so that you can be able to what? Even if you have to sell everything you got 
just so you can purchase that, that field because you know in that field there's a treasure hidden in there. And the only way for me to get to the treasure, I must buy the field. And you find out the field is messed up, it's jacked up, but you know there's a treasure down there. Nobody knows there's a treasure. You sell everything you got, you get to that treasure. So what is this talking about? Get that in Proverbs 2. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandment with thee. I need you to read quick. Read verse 1 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandment with thee. You see that the words is the commandment. Come on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. And apply thine heart to understand. Because now understanding gives you wisdom. Go ahead. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge. Mm. And liftest up thy voice for understanding. You must cry after this great knowledge that the Lord is bestowing upon us. You understand? Go ahead. If thou seekest hair as silver. Mm. And searchest for hair for his treasures. You see what the Lord is saying? So the treasure is the wisdom. It says, if you seek for the wisdom of the Lord, like you're seeking for hidden treasure, guess what's going to happen? Go ahead. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. and find the knowledge of God. Go ahead. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Read. Out of his mouth, knowledge and understanding cometh you knowledge that, and understanding. You see that thing? It says, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. That's the treasure. That is the treasure. It says, a faithful friend is just like this. Because the laws of God, that's supposed to be what? That's supposed to be like a faithful, that's supposed to be like a faithful friend. That's the wisdom of the, you must treat the wisdom of the Lord like that. Likewise, you treat your brother like that because why he believes this truth, so do you. As he is, so shall his neighbor be yours. You see that thing right there? The most High is teaching us the value of the proper friendship according to him. Not according to the world, not according to what the world teaches, because the world don't teach that. The friendship of the world is enmity with God. Understand that, get that in James. The friendship that the, the type of friendship that the world teaches us, it says is, is, a, is, is enmity, is enemy with God. Read that. James 4 verse 4. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 4. Wait. Ye adulterers and adulterers, mm -hmm. know ye not that the friendship of the world is enemy to God? You see that? He says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, because adulterers and adulteresses, that's boyfriends and girlfriends, okay? That's friendship of the world. Because the world teaches that this type of friendship is okay. The world approves of it. You understand? Go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world, is the enemy of God. You see that thing? So the friendship of the world, that is an if you are a, if you are a friend of the world, you are God's enemy. But if you want to be, you want to be in the good books of the most High God, we must keep the commandments as He has commanded us and as He has commanded them unto us. We must not put add or remove. We must as it is written. The way He's guided us, that's exactly how the Lord wants us to do it. But the minute we go outside of the laws that the, the what the most high God has given us, guess what? Now we become God's enemies. You understand? So I need you men and women to understand the thing this day. Okay? So now go back to drug six. Go back to drug six. Read verse 14 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 14. Read. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Mm. And he that has found such an one has found a treasure. Come on. Nothing does, does countervail a faithful friend. Nothing, nothing can countervail a faithful friend. If the brother is faithful, both of you are faithful to the laws of God. That your friendship is based on. Go ahead. And his excellency is invaluable. His excellency is invaluable because why? What makes this friend excellent? God's laws. The laws of God. 
because your this brother approves of the things that are more excellent just like you you approve of the things that are more excellent okay get that in romans 2 romans chapter 2 read verse 18 the book of romans chapter 2 verse 18 read and knowest his will mm -hmm. and approves the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law you see that thing your, your this brother will he approve he knows the will of the father he approves the things that are more excellent because he's being instructed out of god's law just like you you understand so guess what read verse 15 again in the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 16 no one verse five. 15. read Nothing does counterfeit the faithful friend, mm. and his excellency is invaluable because he approves of the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of God's law. Now, read verse 17. Come on, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 17. Read, Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Mm. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. You see that thing, as he is. So shall his neighbor be also. Because why? He's basing his friendship on God's commandment, on the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself. The first and great commandment. You understand? Love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm going to end the class right there. Okay? I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus is a night in which he was betrayed to pray. And when he had given thanks, he prayed and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had subsaid, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord and with it, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh and with it, eateth and drinketh the nation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Oh,